All right, guys, excuse the audio on this one. Um, here, let me show you real quick. Well, I fix it, call me, not sponsored. But first of all, you need a toolkit, but back to the audio thing, let me show you real quick. We got some 3D printing going on, so that's what you're hearing in the background. And it's, you know, it's the workshop. This is just where things happen, manly things happen, things make noise. Deal with it. Uh, I'm trying to get a better camera angle for you guys. Let's set you up right in front of me here. So you can see how this is going to go down. Now, I'll be honest, um, this is going to be maybe a little rough cut. I didn't bother uh, looking up exactly how to do these. I've done one in the past, but just to be clear, this is a Western Digital Elements 8 terabyte drive. Um, it's that clamshell design where the plastic outer bit goes all the way around in like a big U shape. And if I remember correctly, you just get your spudger along the edge and start cracking her open. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, tools like this is really nice because it's a nice thin blade and it won't um, cut you wide open if, it, if you slip with it. But basically, oh, that's right. The top comes off. See, look at that. It's already pulling up but you start it with this because it's the easiest thing to slip in there and um, get things going oops lost that and then when you get your fingers in there usually you can hulk it open oh man that's not giving it up wow all right different strategy let's see Regroup. Uh, also in the iFixit kit is like a nice stronger metal spudger. So we're gonna switch to that because this was giving me a problem. There we go. Yeah, just like I remember. So this is a edge of the clamshell. And now we should be able to pull that open. See, it's got those clips on the inside. Just so you guys can see the orientation. Yep, just keep pulling. And we should be able to do the other side. See, there's the Western Digital in there. This is should be a white label Western Digital. I don't know if it's a black. I'll have to look it up. I'll look up the model number. I'll put it in the description once we figure out exactly what it is. It's probably going to be a black equivalent, if I'm lucky. Or maybe a Western Digital Red. But those are, um, those are if you're really lucky, th those are NAS drives. They're designed to be on 24-7, so that'd be a score if it was a white label red. But not holding my breath. I bought these as backup drives, so they're not going to be in primary use for anything. Man, clips are strong with this one. Oh, there we go. See, so just I, all I did was I pulled up on this. And then it started to slide forward. And then I'm guessing I've still got to pull it out. Yep, there we go. And that reveals the drive. So now you've got a exoskeleton we've got to deal with. We've got our rubber mounts in the corners. Sometimes you got to peel those out. So we just got to figure out what gets released from what corner. So we can put it back together. It's nice to do this non-destructively so you can reuse the case and put another older drive in there or something. So it looks like the drive might just push out towards the top. So if you basically get both thumbs on the back of the drive and push forward, there's no plastic um, clips in the way and it just kind of melts right out of there. Um, and then you've got this LED piping all that does is relocate the light from the LED on the board up to the front. And then I think, yeah, I lost a few of the uh, rubber bumpers along the way. So there's two. Oh, good. And the other two stayed in the case. So we got all our parts. So now the last thing to check is this circuit board. It looks like we've got a normal SATA connector on the back. We've got a screw to deal with. And after we take this off, hopefully we have a standard drive. It works in a regular SATA system. The last hurdle would be uh, some drive manufacturers um, use different power. So if you have 3.3 volts on the SATA power connector, oh, another screw, two screws, one on the side, one on the bottom. Anyway, if you have a 3.3 volt line going into your SATA power connector, 
sometimes some manufacturers take it upon themselves to uh, if the drive senses that 3.3 volts it shuts the drive down so if you ever do this and you have the proper connector like this and you plug it in and it doesn't work odds are there's messing with your uh, power connector and so see each pin is either ground 12 volts or 3 volts I don't well there might be a 5 volt line on this as well anyway I'd have to look it up but anyway you only need 12 volts to run the drive is my point because guess what there's only 12 volts coming into this thing and there's no voltage regulation going on so they're not changing it um, you can make your own cable is my point to only run 12 volts but of course that's a much more involved process but now let's go uh test this in the machine and i'll get back with you guys in a second one more thing let's look at the uh model number if my camera will focus on it but it's a w d 80 e d a z so let's look that up online and i'll put it on the screen for you okay guys i found this real quick on reddit and according to this guy and his testing with a software called unraid there's two versions of this drive that use helium and regular old oxygen for the inside, but the point is it's the exact same benchmark or even a little bit faster than an actual genuine WD Red drive. So those are really nice drives and these externals cost way cheaper than that, you know, 20-30% cheaper. So that's the whole point in doing this. You're getting a great drive as an internal drive. And now back to shucking the other one all right now that we did that we confirm that it works and now that we know what we're doing let's do the other one should go quickly you know famous last words right <laughs> so we just kind of hulk open this case and then pull that around. Get this side going. You want to be careful with this. The plastic it can be sharp, and depending on your skill level with common tools, just be careful. There we go. Now we slide it off just like before. And there's our drive. And see, there's no blocking on the rubber, so we'll just push it out again. See if we can get that going. One corner, got two corners. There's our rubber bump stops. Take out our LED relocator. And we got the same drive again, no problem. Take off these screws. Get that guy out of there. Gently lift that out of the SATA socket. There you go. Bob's your uncle. <laughs> That's it for today, guys. I just wanted to show you how to shuck some drives uh, from a different manufacturer, but it's the same process, and it's, a, it's a, a tiny bit of skill and a whole lot of luck. So good luck to you guys. Do your research. Don't be like me and just YOLO it. Check your warranty. Make sure it boots first, all those good things. Hit the subscribe button. Hit me in the description down below for some links to the the drives, the iFixit kit that I use and all things like that. Ask me some questions. I'll see if I can answer them for you. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.